YouTube, Stitcher, and uh, wherever else, Podomatic also. This is the Retrocade Podcast, Episode 3. I am Phil. Sean. Uh, We are here after a week of Game of Thrones, and uh, I I gotta be honest, it was was a mind-numbing episode. And uh, what'd you think of it, Sean? <laughs> I'm more of an advocate for the books. Uh, up to about the third season. But I, I've been hearing a uh, decent amount of commentary in regards to what went down. Yeah, it, it was wild. That episode was really great. Uh, the, the ending, I guess I'll, it's, we'll do spoilers. It'll be spoilers, spoilers at this point. Spoilers at this, yes. Yeah, it's already. If you haven't seen it at this point, what are you, what are you thinking if you're a Game of Thrones fan? But yeah, uh, the very end... Was I mean? It was probably it was definitely the most epic scene. It, in my opinion, it beats the um, the red wedding scene, and it beats it to hell because that scene, while like epic and sick, this kind of deviated from the books a little bit. And yeah, I would say quite so, but yeah, and it but it did it in, a, in an epic way that really left you you know feeling it was full of emotion, full of action. You know, you felt for the characters, and it was just like eerie. It was like you know, like some people were texting me while it was happening. Uh, and somebody was like, this might be the best 15 minutes of television ever. And I'm like, yo, you know, you not, might not be far off. I, it, you felt, you really did feel it. And it was, it was wild. It was, it was insane though. Now, Jon Snow and the, you know, the free will wild people, of the wildlings, you know, he's getting them back and says, we got to get behind the wall here because there's a problem. These white walkers are coming in and they're going to, you know, wreck shit up. And uh, sure enough, they they come with the whites, the zombie people, and the zombie people just start ravaging things. You know, they just start. You know, a huge battle ensues. You know, everyone's getting what attacked. Were the uh, wildings were they were they around at this point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's both. It's so it's, they weren't fighting. No, well, they they're both battling now. If, you know, against the whites, and a lot of people got held held behind the wall because they they were coming to close the wall, and they close, and people get left behind. Oh, no, let me see. And uh. And then so they're fucking, you know, the walls closed at this point, and the whites are freaking ripping through it. They're shooting arrows, cutting limbs, uh, you know, repatching the wall. It's hard to keep up with the eight show rendition. I have to, you know. Yeah, Sean's a bit of. Sh- I've read all the, the books, and uh, the story definitely deviates. I mean. Yeah, Sean's a bit behind on the TV show. Little but, Finger, yeah. with, with Sansa is a whole different story arc. When you yeah, have the I know. I pro- yeah, he, uh, sh- does she even get married to Ramsay Bolton in the book? There's a I don't want. I don't read the book. A fictitious Arya gets married to Bolton. They know it's a fake girl. Oh so right, they right, have, right, like, right, an Arya impersonator right. married Bolton, so they have kind of reign over Stark. Yeah, I did hear that. I did hear that. But I would disagree with you, even in the show perspective, with the Red Wedding. Uh, the Red Wedding was such impactful that. It was shocking. You were almost like glued, like that. That really happened. Yeah. Right? Well, I guess savage, I, guess, I guess the red wedding was bigger because and, so many main characters got killed. The consequences were massive. Yeah. Drastic. Yeah. It changed the 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 arc, the, the the whole framework of the show at that point. The books are still starting. You know, there's a lot of faction developed through the red wedding. Sure. If you look at the Dorian, then he has he's, he's kind of this healer guy who the show pretty much overlooked. And I'm not going to go into if you haven't read the books, I'm not going to divulge into other character development. Well, there's a large character that the show basically overlooked. And, you know, I guess it's deviating to – it's a matter of subject matter. you got to continue it. you got to progress it. It's a cash hell. You can't let the train stop. So he's going to keep producing, and they're going to deviate as far from the story as possible without completely, you know, ruining it or throwing it to the ground. Right. It still has to be somewhat relevant to, you know, Martin's – Grand yeah, picture. the the grand scheme, the scheme of things, and that's true. Um, and at the same time, you know, a lot of people that you know, I'm hearing just tons of complaints. You know, it's not like the books. You know, can't get into it. it you know, it's so stupid the way that they're doing it. And like, you know, I disagree. I, you, like, do you really want to watch a show where you know everything that's going to happen before it happens? I mean, that's the main reason that these new Star Wars movies are not following the Timothy Zahn books or anything. It's like, well, that's not what happened. You know, Luke marries Mara Jade and, and Grand Admiral Thrawn. And it's like, but dude, you're gonna like you're gonna watch comic book guy voice. Yeah, yeah because. Relevant. Because you're going to watch, you know, these movies and know everything that happens. And if you followed all the old Expanded Universe canon, Chewbacca would be dead at this point. You know, there'd be so much other. You'd have the three kids. That canon's so massive. Cause you yeah, had, you had, had so many books. 30 years to, to Yeah, exactly. Like, with it. Now we're so far in the future. It's not like the Timothy Zahn books. They were based, I think, three or five years after, you know, Heir to the Empire was 
um, three or five years after Return of the Jedi. So there's a lot of gaps to fill in that. You know, this is 2015. Right. This is 30 years after. But you look at Game of Thrones more than Star Wars is. It's not really. It's all anti-heroes. Besides Jon Snow, yeah, it's not really. There's a no hero. a clear-cut hero. Everyone Could you call Daenerys a hero? In a way, but she's also you know has, yeah, she frees slaves, but she has her own agenda. <laughs> sure, you know, she just crushed her enemies and also the whole Targaryen history, which wasn't that relative in the beginning. Now she kind of like loves it, kind of goes through with it, and the whole Dragon Queen is getting to her head where she is thinking, you know, she's going along with it, and right, she does right, definitely, right. I would not call her a hero whatsoever. But there will inevitably be a clash between her and all the other factions. It's, oh, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be, be a big one at the how end. How long is this going to be? Is this 20 years in the making? You know, it's it's a matter of time. And Yeah. Well, are they going to, um, you know, are they, are they going to speed it up in the timeline-wise for the, the show, or is that, you know... But, again, again, that boils back to my main... You know, the the main reason I brought up Star Wars is because that do you really want to watch a show where you know what's already going to happen because you read the books? Like, it was good for season one, especially when, you know, the books were relatively unknown. So then in the show became a huge hit. Everybody wanted to go out and buy the books. If you look what worked out, chronological timeline with actors and timing was the Harry Potter series movie-wise. Oh, yeah. The last books weren't finished while the movies were in production. Right. So by the time the last book was done, you managed to get the actors to do... The more the rest the of the seven movies making the seventh part of two parter, which obviously financially makes sense. That worked great. Yeah. Well, you look at the Hobbit three fucking movies, <laughs> three movies. Yes, yeah. uh, they did not need to do that. I remember when I heard that they like were splitting them pages. up. It's it, as I'm saying, and that's why those movies are so ridiculous because you already have told the big story. Now you're telling like you know the littler story, the pro the uh, prologue to it. The Fellowship the Hobbit is half of the Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah, half yeah, that and, one and book. The movie is almost <laughs> you combine them into three of them. It's over eight hours. Yeah, it's way too much. Yeah, I you <laughs> know the, the, like those movies you snooze through as opposed to the first three, which are like you know engaging and you know very fun to watch. Pretty much every scene, you know, you're you're looking to see what's happening next. You know, it's very quotable. The 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 Hobbits are sno- generally like snoozers. The Hobbit, but if you, you know, Read the Hobbit. There's a Legolas. There's, there's a lot of. I have the Hobbit inside. I don't even read it. Like necromancers, <laughs> and there's some obscure characters that yeah. were created strictly for the movie. Strictly for the movie, sure. Well, and you it, needed it, to it have more. have a right? reference, right? Literally a one sentence reference in the Hobbit. And yeah, and then they they, sp- they fleshed it out. Easy for <laughs> All right, we'll milk Two, that. An hour and some screen time. <laughs> we'll milk that. Sentence. Yeah. And that was the thing was that, like, well, I guess one movie, like, well, they want to, you know, milk the franchise well, a little more than the Tolkien lore. There's also reason to believe that the Tolkien estate, they don't want to do any more movies. Yeah. So Peter Jackson's audition is the end. That was it, So they yeah. figured this is it. This Let's is it. Let's milk go it. out and milk it for what they want. And obviously, financially is a great idea, but artistically, when I heard three movies, I was like, oh, God, why? Two makes not? sense. Three is just... Two could have made sense. You could have did a two and out. Outlandish, ridiculous. But, you know, the way the studios think is like, well, I'll just make another trilogy and we'll make more bucks. And t- it's true. You know, what did the last one make? I mean, they made hundreds of millions in profit. I, mean, I saw three in the movie theater, so there you go. It's... Right. I, I, I didn't see them in the theaters. Nah, I'm going to be honest. I was always a Tolkien I, fan. So yeah, I, had I mean, I was, I was, I was a huge. I seen the original three inch, uh, in theaters, but I was like Hobbit. Nah, I watched them on TV. And to go into Lord of the Rings, it really is when established you know, Game of Thrones and all these other genres. True, without the original, it with, was without Lord far. of the Rings, without Tolkien's work, you wouldn't have George R R R, R. Martin's the most influential George R. 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 literature R. R. within the whole genre, Absolutely. without a doubt. You know, without the the fantasy, you know. Uh, Genre. The fascinating fact about him is he was writing the book during World War One. Yeah. So I think it was the Dark, uh, the Two Towers, the second book. Mm-hmm. He literally had the only man with him. He was like right, pen and paper in. Wow. In World War One, literally in the. Like the bu- uh, the yeah. bunkers <laughs> underground. Uh, underground this, the hell, essentially. <laughs> yeah. So if he was to get sh- if he got shot, they would have that, that would have been that that would have been it. Trenches, there you go. Yeah, the tra- he was in the trenches there. It, it's just crazy, and um, you know, and that that work is great. It I mean, was meant, you know, yeah, it was produced. meant to be, and uh, you know, great, and so many things have come out of it, elves and stuff. I mean, he kind of popularized like elves dwarves, and shit, of elves and dwarves, more. all that, li- yeah, all that like. You know, yeah, the Dungeons and Dragons esque. Right, the Dungeons and Dragons based. type lore was all based on you know, Magic: The Gathering, the game, the card game. I mean, that, the elves and all that stuff, all that lore, orcs and 
all those that stuff it's, is it's seen everywhere it all is. drawn from Tolkien's original works and uh, you gotta give him tons of credit for that and that's why I love the original game, Lord of the Rings trilogy the first produced version was, was an animated feature in yes, the 70s yes yes I've seen it it's remarkably <laughs> terrible it's almost so bad that it's great it's like uh, the the Star Wars when they had the droids TV show or something it's just like Crap! It's, it was really for kids, though. So it was like did, the holiday did, did special. They do, it, yeah, it was like the holiday special, or at least the the animated the animated, animated part of the holiday special. So terrible. Yeah, terrible. Actually, you know what? The animated part of the holiday special is my favorite it's part. It's a redeeming, but it's an introduction of Boba Fett. Yeah, Boba Fett. Yeah. So people saw it was massively hyped out. They're like, "Who's that?" Yeah. Cool. Right. Because he was cut out of episode, uh, you know, the first movie. They was cut out of Star Wars. Yeah, I know the special edition. Special oh, edition, they were, they threw him back in there with Jabba, the Jabba. Like in the background. Yeah, I don't he, think he even has a line. He doesn't. <laughs> he only has four lines in the first three movies anyway. Put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. Um, Sean Samuel, one of the Game of Thrones editors, died today. Yeah, she is that the, the lion? lion. Safari. So that's true. She was a Game of Thrones editor. I was hearing all sorts of... Uh, video editor. Conflicting reports. I heard it was no, it was a twenty-two-year-old working for, uh, you know, a publishing company, and then somebody was no, it was twenty-nine-year-old girl that was work, you know, editor on Game of Thrones. Well, so I didn't know which was which. Her. She looks, about, I would say twenty-nine. I don't yeah. say twenty-two. I saw a picture too. She's walking into like a uh, airport. It's like an Instagram. You know, oh yeah. Backpack okay. something. Yeah, I saw a backpack like picture. I yeah, I saw the backpack picture. I that would was the one say I she's twenty-two. I would. Yeah, so if you're an editor I heard for Game of Thrones. Reports. I don't think they're hiring. No, and like, right, like fresh intern, out the bag. If it was twenty-two-year-old intern. Yeah, come right like, on Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah there's there's somebody a little more confident. On HBO. Yeah, yeah. If it was like Unpaid interns. The Price is Right. Eh? It can make sense. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, so that that's some crazy stuff. She got killed, mauled by a lion. Was it a lion? It was a lion. Wow. She was actually protesting uh, poachers, which is ironic. Oh, the irony. Ironic, yeah. The irony of it all. <laughs> Don't kill these defenseless animals. <sighs> and they maul her. Oh, that's fucked. Eh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, you gotta have a little compassion there. But it is unfortunate. Uh, but when you're playing with uh, dangerous animals that can maul your face off, you gotta watch it. So, so recently, uh, well, it's been out for a little while, we a documentary, a Fistful of Quarters. Oh, man, Fistful of Quarters. That's been, Well, it was out in 07. It's been out a long time, but it, it was, you know. Yeah. Uh, it was great, Ex exhilarating. You're watching the whole thing. You get you drawn into it relatively quickly. I, it, it's got to be one of the best like nerd type documentaries out there. I've I've watched them all. I've watched People vs. George Lucas, like The Plastic Galaxy. I've watched uh, uh, the the other one that they have on uh, Netflix, Jedi. Uh, Whatever. Like junkies, man. Jedi Junkies, Those, yeah. Some of the Netflix ones are. Yeah, a lot of them suck. Lot of kind of just but I heard about Fistful of Quarters. It's not even on Netflix. It's not on Netflix. Now you got to find it otherwise. Uh, it's called King of Kong, Fistful of Quarters. And I see it on Rotten Tomatoes. It's got like a 97 or some shit. And I'm like, what? It's like, regarded as a premier record within video games. Because you yeah. do speed gaming online, all these YouTube channels. Right. As far as video games are concerned, this harkens back to the golden age of arcade well, gaming. Established Nintendo as a franchise. Yes, and uh, of course with you know Donkey Kong, which is the first Mario game, and that's what this is about. It's about gaming in the early '80s, the arcade games, and like who was the very, very best, and um, you know basically bases itself around um, the arcade game Donkey Kong. It's a whole culture, that, yeah. That it's a whole subculture from. of you know people that are you know super you know gamers and looking to get the high scores on those games. And I don't know if anybody here has played Donkey Kong, the arcade game. They have it at Barcade in uh, Manhattan on the um, St. Mark's one. Do they have it at the? There's another documentary. It's in every single one. Every single one. It's a great it's game. The it's the it's flagship the yeah. It's the flagship. Game. You need it. You need it there because that was the game. Because I was playing everything else. I went to Barcade over the weekend twice. I went Friday and Saturday on oh, St. Mark's in Manhattan. There's us uh, in Chelsea. St. There's Mark's one place. in Chelsea. Yeah. What about there's the Williamsburg the, and the Williamsburg Jersey City? They have it in all of them. Oh, what about they have the one in Phil Pennsylvania now, right? Philadelphia. Philadelphia might, but I don't know if it's the same. Yeah, I've like uh, ownership. No, it will park. It's still. There's I mean, unless they're franchising. The area, yeah, for for in this area, yeah. And uh, so I I was going after I watched this documentary like pretty much so, solely to try to get to like the, the next level because that it, game is hard. It's about patience. It's all it, about patience. Patience and also timing. Extreme memorization. It's memorization of every little thing and the timing and also the luck because you get friggin' screwed on the joystick and which happened to me a few times. I I had five dollars and quarters. I was like I'm getting to this second it's level of this game. It's, uh, so initially the character's name was Jumpman. Right, and Jumpman was Mario. The owner of one of their warehouses was named Mario. He was an Italian guy. This is, I want to say, 1981, 1980. Yeah, the game had on in 80, I think. You know, 
pretty much super Italian guy, stereotypes and all. And right. They kind of said, "Hey, you know, you might have they use we use your likeness for this." Oh, they use his likeness. That's they how they changed the name to Mario because they had their like the owner of their warehouse, but did, super but Italian, did, like, you know, landlord kind of guy. Did they use his likeness for um, Jumpman's likeness? Well, they just said, "Do you mind if we use?" Because the name Jumpman Mario just sounded a little more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, jump man. Yeah, it's like, you what know. What are you, run man? Mega. <laughs> what are you, run man? Bounce man? I know, and all he did was jump and run and hit the hammer. It's a similar story like that. Even though that worked out well, there was no lawsuits. The Simpsons, one of the Fat Tony's minions. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, one of the, 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 you know, super stereotype Italian I'll, I'll masters. Pull I'll pull up the, the guy, guy now. He was in, he's, he's in Goodfellas. He plays uh, he's like an Afro Frankie guy. Car- yeah, he plays Frankie Carbone. Frankie I'll pull up. Carbone, there I'll, you go. I'll, I'll pull up the actor's name now. Um, he was oh Frank Severo. He, he plays Frankie Carbone. Now he sued because of his likeness. So at one point he lived in the same apartment building as uh, not Matt Groening, but one of the producers of The Simpsons. Okay. So he lived. This is probably the eighty, or you know, early nineties, late eighties. He lived in the apartment with them, and they were like neighbors essentially. Lived on the same floor, or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. So they kind of base a character off him. Of. And right. if you look at the image, it's spinning. No, image. It's, the skin looks has, just like it. The hair is the giveaway. The it's hair is what does it. Afro ish. Yeah, that like you know nappy fro, fro hair that he's got. Like they settled out of court, but he was asking for like six, seven million. I don't know. What the full verdict was? He was no, no. He was asking for more than that. He was asking for two fifty. Maybe that's what they gave him six, seven million. But did they give him anything? Let's see. I'm pretty sure it sold out of court. From what I mean, it's just happened really, uh, not recently. Yeah, like probably. Well, yeah. So I guess he was. He, what, wait. So he was he um, roommates with James L. Brooks or? They lived the same apartment. Oh, he lived building. in the apartment complex in Sherman Oaks next to writers. Um, so it does, or it doesn't say who it was. It just says writers. Oh, that was a producer. Well, yeah, writers they state makes more the sense. writers were aware the entire character Frankie Cabron was created and developed by him. Really, the character's created and developed by him was just for, wasn't for a movie in Goodfellas, and um, who based his character. Well, everything's on his own fabricated when it comes to you know, lawsuits. Yeah, obviously. exactly. A short time later, blah blah. blah Louis beca- began in The Simpsons, and then I mean, it's true. I mean, but come on, you know, like. You want a quick buck, an easy buck? Yeah. And you have the conniving lawyers in the background saying, yep. good, do it. I'm yeah. the emperor. Yeah, you're good, do it. We want a percentage. So I guess they um, you know, flew with it. And I guess it's settled our court. doesn't really give an answer here on this, this website. But... I don't think they wanted to deal with it. So essentially they were just... They just pay- gave him some money and just said, shut up. Be quiet, bad yeah. publicity, go yeah, away. Yeah, you might as well. And go they, away, essentially. They're kind of right. I mean, all right, so he played, he was in Go- yeah, he was in Godfather 2, of course, too. He played uh, in the, the the throwback scenes to the 40s when Any young Vito Corleone can play, with Robert De Niro. Secondary gangster. That, mm. he's, that's it. He's never He was played. in a few more, too. Definitely Every one of them. Figure. Yeah, he was in Little Nicky at one so point. He's playing a scumbag, essentially. Yeah, let's see what other movies he was in that you might know. Um... Well, yeah, he, he was in actually both Godfathers. Who, oh, he's an extra in the Sonny Beats Carlo scene. He's in Godfather 2 as Jenko. He plays Jenko of Jenko Olive Oil. Um, Getting all these stereotypical olive oil. Yeah, he's, of that. course he sells olive oil. What a surprise. Oh, oh, he's in The Wedding Singer. He's in The Aviator somewhere. Um, and it's for the most part. Everything else nobody cares about. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, so that was an interesting thing to happen. And, uh, but... Going back to um, King of Kong, so it's it's, it's interesting they kind of set up these, these villains and, and <laughs> yeah. anti heroes. Well, that's the thing you would think it was just a documentary like, like talking nerdy, about video games, like a 40, nerdy fifty year old guys trying to break a video game. Record yeah, you would there. think it would be boring, but there was actually like he- crazy human elements in this documentary, like emotions. Like these guys are such nerds, you know. And it, the audacity, Billy Mitchell is very fascinating. Oh, guy. oh yeah. So that's that's the main one. He's at, the most fascinating. You just look at him and you're like, what the fuck is this guy? Yeah. B- Billy Mitchell was the quote unquote reigning champion of Donkey Kong in the '80s. He had the highest score. We- weird looking dude. He has like this long mullet and like Super long hair, mustache, beard, beard and um, you know, like nowadays, he wears kind of like velvet looking shirt. Yeah, he wears like you know, he's like uh. 
flamboyant outfits like and like big you, belt buckle. Yeah, yeah, like amazing. you know. And he's from Florida. Can't, you can't miss him. You really? can't miss him at all. He sticks out like a sore thumb. And like uh, so nowadays, you know, he's an adult now. He was a teenager he, then. He's he owns like a and he fried owns, chicken. He owns, or chicken a, he owns a chicken restaurant. restaurant in Hollywood, Florida. And um, it's a weird place, by the way. <laughs> yeah, right. Hollywood, it's Florida, a fantasy just, land. Woo. It's interesting. And he sells hot sauce or whatever. So he's like a, he's a success, successful businessman now. And uh, you know, he's kind of full of himself. He's an arrogant guy. He's got kind of like you know. Uh, not a hot wife, you know, paid for jugs and uh, those things. Are yeah, yeah his wife, you look at his wife you're like because wow, because early in the movie I was like, wait, and then I, I was I watched it with Angela and I was like, is that? Is, I was like, wait, what does his wife look like? And then she shows up and she's actually like, too attractive for him because he's like, you know, he's like a weird looking dude with a mullet. You know, he's like in the, it's in the two thousand seven. He's throwing around mullet. his Donkey Kong title. And yeah, he yeah. Just sells chicken essentially in his hot sauce. He, but he's like a guy. He's full of himself. He's like ego inflated. You know, oh, I'm the best he because I own a business. Though. He caught your attention. He did. He's like captivating because he's like just that weird. That documentary would be nothing without him. Huh? Yeah, no. And then, he, so you then, look at his contrast. This guy Weeb. Like Weeb was the, the name. Steve Weeb, Weeb was the challenger. Like, yeah, he's you know, like Weeb. Dweeb, dude, yeah, like, Steve Dweeb, who was essentially just a high school teacher from Seattle. Seattle, uh, Washington, who, Greater. Yeah, Washington. Greater Washington is Seattle area. And uh, his parents, his mother, at one point said, "Like I think he had a little uh, bit of um, the the what's it called the uh, Rain Man. What does Rain Man yeah, have? Like a, you know." Natural abilities, you could yeah, like, on, like kind of, something. yeah, like kind of like an idiot savant type of thing where so. he was like, uh, like a, a little, um, uh, w- whatever. And, and so this guy just had the, but he seems like a normal he dude. The, he had the cabinet in his garage. Yeah, normal family guy, and he's like, all right, so he's just placed Donkey Kong. Right, he, he heard about the record. And he was like, uh, I think I could beat that. And then there's this record company called Twin Galaxies, which records well, the that's records. Another character, and this the guy another, that runs it. The guy that runs it is a character. He like does like music or whatever. He's like an old hippie that's like just recording the scores, which is like a website recording these scores of arcade games. Way more relevant. You know, then years ago. Who, now who cares? And now you know because uh, he lives. He, he shows apartment. Just, <laughs> he was like on a bar, he was like on a with, barn at uh, one point. It's like VHS tapes of videos. Yeah, of people. I'm sure now they're sending him more. Steve right, because this was and this was a, emails of you. right. Because this was a few years ago, so uh, 07, so they're like, and I think it was recorded even earlier than that. So they, um, you know, people are sending in VH ta- VHS tapes of them beating records because there was no other way to, like, verify how else you would do beat an arcade game. You know, you can't, like, digitally send it to them. And I guess this is before the time of, like, you know, SD cards or whatever. So this is a couple of years ago, like 10 years ago maybe now. And so people are sending in VHS tapes of them beating records or, you know, attempting to beat records or whatever, you know. And uh, so Steve Weeb guy says, well, I think I can beat the record. So he goes and he beats it. Uh, he beats the guy Billy Mitchell's record by like, you know, he Billy record Billy Mitchell's record was like over a million points. And Steve just beat it, you know, like by like whatever, 50,000 or 100,000 or whatever. Yeah, it's interesting about the point. There's a point in the game where you can't go further. And there's like a kill right, screen. Right, kill screen. Yeah, most most arcade games didn't have enough memory to finish well, the game. The so they had a kill screen. Forever, you can't go on forever. So it has a, a final re- – even um, um, Pac-Man has it. Where it's like a, essentially a glitch screen where it's glitched and you die, <laughs> you know, because it can't the, – the game doesn't but have the enough memory, memory to finish. memory these things are – the technology, tell you, the memory of things are nothing. It's, it's nothing. It's zero. It's like a text message. It's like a, it's like the memory of almost the text message, or like you know, like maybe a GIF picture that you would send in exactly. a text message. Exactly. JPEG. Yeah, like one. a J. Yeah, like that's the amount of memory in this game, and uh, so they couldn't go on. Stupid selfie it could... essentially has the same. You know. Right. Yeah. Like a, your your selfie that you just put on Instagram has more memory. You know, is taking up more space than the, the full game of Donkey Kong with this huge arcade. You know. Arcade box. Well, there's other f- famous character even outside the documentary. There's a, a big surge in New York and all like barcade. So oh the yeah, barcade now and two, two, uh, uh, eight bits uh, arcade or two. No, it's two, two bits arcade. Bit that's in I haven't the Lower been there East Side. It's I've, pretty good. It's what, in LES. Lower East Side. Why haven't I been there yet? Um, it was cool. They have a little niche and they sell forties and stuff. Oh yeah, so do they? Gotta drink a forty, yeah. play your game. So that's a new kind of cool thing, you know. People, you know, it's popping up around the country. It's popping up because um, it's now it's, some huge ones in Chicago. As I well. yeah, I would think it would do great a lot of places because you would think like you know. All right, the bar thing, people, it's, like, been done. Even my friend was saying, the other day, all people do is drink. I was like, well, yeah, what do you expect them to do? You know, it's like you go to a bar and, you know, maybe there's some live music and you chill out and you socialize. But this is a cool thing. And I, and in my opinion, it's much more interesting and grittier than a and Dave and Buster's or anything like, like that. Yeah, you're not playing these stupid, you know, yeah, like fruit overpriced samurai slot games. Games. Yeah, like, you know, like high-tech games, the old gritty 80s Great, games. Is over. I prefer that. Just I prefer, yeah, me too. And, you know, they have such a... It's always come back to childhood, but you're in this, like, smoky arcade. Right. 
Yeah, yeah, smoky, dingy dingy. arcade, and uh, you're just playing old retro games, and and also the retro games are ten times more difficult than anything. Oh, so much harder, and much, you know, the the simplicity to it gave it charm. You know, it gave it like, you know, just a simple like upright left back, and that was the fun of it. You know, like like Donkey Kong is such a simple game. Back, forth, up, down the fucking, and j- bounce, jumping and over barrels. Initially, and it, and when it was fun, in development, it was called King Kong. But oh yeah, with movie rights and such. Yeah, like, yeah, you would have to get the licensing. Yeah, so, like, you know, the title Donkey Kong doesn't even make sense. Say Donkey Kong, but yeah. it's like a name that you would remember. Yeah. And now it's an iconic branded name. You know, Nintendo everybody used knows to make Donkey playing Kong. cards and like games, like uh, board games and stuff like that. Before they were literally a playing card company. That was their first. Nintendo was a playing card. That company. was their first jump into video games. Video games, yes. Uh, and look at that! Look at the, the results. And the game. results are thirty. Five years well, of been, glory. I mean, they've been slacking as of late. I mean, if we had somebody, our other get, uh, guest host here, Steve, he would argue, be like, "Well, they're the most selling, blah 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 blah." But they it's like, their devoted fanboys. They have a, obviously a, a nice and fan base Zelda of titles that, I mean, devotes. Just titles I love, which are Zelda. Of right. Course, they have some others. great. I mean, some of their best titles. They have Zelda. They have. Uh, <laughs> all the Mario's. Those are the best. Look at something like Pokemon was massive. This Pokemon year. tremendous, it's the biggest billion handheld dollar. Game. You know, I mean, and Pokemon. You see tremendous. all these people playing their, you know, these Clash of Clans and all these games on their phone. Pokemon's still the massive, biggest, uh, you know, handheld type game. Still. millions upon millions of players, still. and it's still to this day going on since the nineties. That's funny. You that's have, almost you have players 20, that's twenty. That's twenty. Pokemon's old in twenty years. You have Japan. players that are in their you know, thirty years old, late twenties, and. Because kids, it's still massively marketable as well. Sure. I mean, Pokemon's still fun to play even on a level now. I mean, it's that RPG style that just doesn't, you know, it just has something that you, like, you want to keep playing. You want to, like, you know, get to the next level and, you know, get more of these new creatures and all that. They recently had, a, you know, a Twitch where they have, it's like a, people can vote on what actions do with a character for video games. Yeah. They did Twitch play, I think it was Pokemon Blue. Oh, that was my favorite. My first. They were having, my favorite. You know, any given time, there was 100,000 people watching. So basically, everyone says, everyone votes. Yeah. Does he move right? Does he move left? Does he press start? Oh, so okay. So the game's constantly fidgeting and, you know, oh, it looks funny. like someone's having a seizure. Yeah, 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 yeah. They eventually beat the game. It's Get out of here. It's possible. It's just a matter of, you know. That's crazy. Yeah, I guess. I, how long would that take? going back and forth. Yeah, back yeah, yeah. You would think that would take an eternity. I don't remember the specific time, but it was averaging 100,000 viewers. Wow, so a hundred thousand people are like trying to play and it then? Yeah, so it, it <laughs> progresses. You know? That's so, an event. Yeah, like little you by catch little, a it progresses. Or whatever, right? You it, it, turn it. Yeah, you level three. Uh, you know, was, a week later, level four. Yeah, when, it, when it was like when it was like final elite four, it was getting like crazy views. Like, yeah, it was all, right. over, all over the internet. It yeah. was huge. You, would you think people would be trying briefly. to make it work? You know, to purposely Some make people, you lose? There's Dicks trolls coming out there. Yeah, let's make it lose. Well, that's funny. Use whirlwind. And yeah, shit, yeah, you know? exactly. Like, let's play Sting or Harden. <laughs> it's like, no, you're Harden. supposed to use this, this Fisher. Great names with Metapod and Harden. Yeah. <laughs> Metapod used Harden, but it failed. It failed. <laughs> See, his like wife is all upset. Yeah, oh, I love those. Yeah, those, those are a fantastic. Lot of memes like that. That's funny shit. Yeah, but the um, yeah, and King King Kong goes on. Um, so they didn't. This twin galaxies are kind of in league with this guy Bill Mitchell, the guy with the mullet. And so Steve Weeb, Walter Day would be the founder. Walter Day, right of Twin Galaxies. He, he looks like a Grateful Dead guy. Yeah, yeah he, old hippie, you know, with his playing his music, and he's in league. They're like in league with Bill Mitchell. They've been so since the eighties, and um, so he sends in his tape, Steve Weeb, with his his win, have a better score, and they wouldn't accept it because they go to his house and they let him. They they inspect his um game system. So they're going through the motherboard and shit, and they're like, wait, they see a box. Um, from the address of some guy. What was the name of that guy? Yeah, there, there was some guy that he was slightly in cahoots with that apparently was called. Oh, Roy Schultz? Cheating. Uh, yeah, I think it was Roy Schultz. Manipulating was, records. Yeah, he was basically he was, a cheater blacklisted in the gaming community. Right, he was a blacklisted guy. And for some reason, he had sent a motherboard. He saw him online and he's yeah, like... Yeah, because they're in the same this guy's know, in a, subculture. Like a middle class, you know, lower teacher, doesn't have... His children isn't a funds laying around. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, you you know, know, the arcade technology is very expensive. It's expensive way. to repair. To fix yeah, it. Yeah, get it. Like that's why the, that's the it costs that's so the much more than the cabinet itself. It's, it does, and that's the downfall of ha- owning yes. one of those barcades. Because I think about it all the time that would be awesome to own all, all, all these retro games you'd own and have your own place. But it's like they probably break all the time, it, and it would it, cost so much. Pockets of people is maybe there's less than 100 individuals in the United States that could fix them. You know, right. you're not gonna it's, look at the yellow page and say no. arcade repair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, exactly. It's a niche. It's a niche repair yeah, market. We, we live and in New York or you know California. Major you, travelers, you're gonna you, find. You one. can get away with it. You're in the but suburbia, yeah, if you're in somewhere, Iowa, yeah, somewhere, yeah. Or somewhere random, Oklahoma, South Dakota. Yeah, exactly. It's, Virginia, you're not it's gonna, probably gonna. You're be gonna tough. have to travel. Yeah, like, you have to send the parts you're, you're out. You're gonna ship these th- things. Yeah, well, the part, the motherboards and shit, and that's what happened with this guy Roy. He sends a motherboard to Steve Weeb, and because of that, they. Th- Weren't sure that he maybe not mess with the electronics. Like he was another guy of the Billy Mitchell character. That yeah, he was another he another to, character. Billy Mitchell hated him. They had yeah, they were beef. Right, they were nemesis. There was his nemesis. They had a beef before, and they wouldn't give his this guy Roy his score for another game. Um, he was he. Uh, I think it was Missile Command. He they, he claimed to own the high score of Missile Command, but they wouldn't give it to him. And uh, that was essentially. Um, because it was Bill Mitchell's nemesis. I mean, this guy, he's like, in his mid 40s, he's got all these nemesis, you know? Like, he's got all these enemies. And uh, so, because they were or like. Nemesis. It's, <laughs> it's so funny. Like, if you're Genghis Khan, you might have a nemesis. I know. Like, 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 who has a nemesis in their mid 40s, you know? Like, I'm living in, if I'm in Liberia, you know, right now, <laughs> if I'm an African warlord, I might have a nemesis. Right, so. a nemesis. Your, your ultimate. You're enemy. playing video games and you want a chicken <laughs> restaurant. It's, it's just, but that just—it's so funny because that's how like overgrown children that they are. And the funny thing is, is that you know the guy Bill Mitchell's successful. You assume he's like a millionaire or whatever. He's like wealthy business owner. Like seems to have life it's under charismatic control. Charismatic character. That's people like, are yeah. business successful. Right. Yeah, but, but, but draw attention. But to it's your so, brand. because it's so weird because he's such an unusual like. Physically but, unusually well, looking guy, like flamboyant. I mean, these people with that are mullet, like, billionaires, so but if you look at their success, you know, Mark Cuban's, Donald Trump's, they sure. sold their brand. Of course, that's you sell yourself. That's what they did. You of know? course, I think about that all the time. It's like he well, was like Trump stars like a shitty real estate mogul. Yeah, well, his father was wealthy. And properties. He just, yeah, and he just yeah you know, became a personality with his loud mouth. He, Same uh, thing with Cuban. He you wrote know, a few books and just, right. like the title was some. And people, you know, people think he would be a good president, but that's another story. <laughs> Who is this? Uh, people, these people that watch reality television for yeah, yeah, I, I hear it all the time. He should be president. Oh, oh my look, god, Jenner's a woman. Like, <laughs> oh god, yeah, but, no, that's not happening <laughs> on this podcast. You go everywhere else to listen about talk about that. Not on this. Not on my watch. I can make negative comments, but I'll just no. I, I'd say I would leave only positive comments, but leave, I don't want to hear it at all. <laughs> you know, it's, it's good, good for it's him. Gonna deviate it, from this. Yeah, reality I mean, sludge. You, you, you go my, watch TMZ for that. <laughs> That's it's, that's like watching more than the actual news. It's, I know, but well, that's, not that our news is relative. It's like murders uh, and it's American culture for you. News is such fodder. But uh, back to King of Kong. So, um, so the only way for him, for um, Bill Billy to prove his or no Steve the guy Steve Weeb to prove his skills to Twin Galaxies to get the real record was they wanted him to do it in person. At like the the flagship arcade it's place, so it's like Indianapolis. Uh, no, New Hampshire. It, it was oh, in New Hampshire. Yeah, no, Fun Spot Arcade, New Hampshire. So he had to travel. Twin Galaxies in Indianapolis originally. Twin that's, Galaxies in Indianapolis, yeah, but they wanted this confused. was like some sort of like mecca for arcading. I guess I don't know why it was such a big why they all wanted to use that spot. Regard as like the yeah know. like the premier spot for like arcading. I guess I guess it's still around. And so he traveled there, and um, one of those places like a relic. You know, it's like, yeah. It was like oh exactly it closes, like. What was really upsetting was years ago in Chinatown, the China Fair Arcade. They reopened it, though. Didn't they reopen it? It's it the Dave & Buster's crap clone. It's, uh, it was like, I thought it still says China Fair, though. It might still say it, but it's just not it's, the same grit. Because I'm, I'm never there these, early enough it's, anymore because yeah, it's not open It's late. literally in the gutter of Mott Street. You can't, yeah, it's right you across to, from Woe Hop you if you ever into Wohop. the Chinatown. And just, yeah. I used to off the, off the path. Back in the early, late 90s. I remember cutting high school being yeah. 14 Even years old. I, I was there before there. high school. And yeah. it was a pretty place for like fighting games. Yeah. Mortal Kombat or any of the bigger. The like Marvel's Capcom. Street Fighters are huge. Yeah, there. Street Fighters. Well, uh, in fact, it was still open when Street Fighter, I think, 4 came out with the Xbox 360. It that game was around me. 2008, I'm going to say. I, after that, because I was there in 08. Probably 9 or 10. Eight. Yeah, ten is be yeah, lay for stretch. ten. But Maybe so it's been closed a few years. But people have been saying it's been reopened. It was the iconic arcade, iconic recently. arcade China Fair or whatever it was called, and right across the street from the Wohop restaurant that's open all night long. It's another late night, another booze, late night uh, spot. But definitely, you know, a, a staple for Chinatown. That place it, was gritty. It's staple for the city. L, yeah, staple for the city. You have L shaped little dungeon type it's arcade it was a great arcade 98 percent men but you would have you know we know you would you would have like oh dance dance revolution was huge there of course because it's chinatown you would have guys in suits and then you, you would yeah have, 
He's like, oh, there would always be like you know the the gamer kids like you'd have really these, like, hot chi- girlfriends. You'd have like Chinatown high school kids that would yeah. go there, or like chi- Chinatown like but you know, even young kids, punk kids. You would too. see like eight year olds in there playing. Dude. Oh yeah, it had all walks of life. It had everything. It, it looked like yeah, a it subway was, with it, more it, children. It, it was like a subway with more our children. It was a subway with more kids and with video games. But yeah. you also see these kids like smoking cigarettes. Yeah, it was so dingy. You know, and it, it was looked like you were in a time machine. Warped floor, concrete floor. It was never clean. It was an L shape. You know, like like you walked in and then you walk left. And it was like that was it, you know. And it, it, but it had a huge selection of the old vintage games. I mean, a huge cool selection. Apparently, the owners built uh, another location in Brooklyn. I don't know how that. successful it was, and it's not the same. Yeah, it's just, nah. it made premiere for fighting games. It's sort of uh, like they have a community, so they yeah, for they, tournaments they, and um, stuff like so that. So they um, yeah, catered to that community. You know, I remember Dance Dance Revolution that was big. In fact, the first time I went there, it was because my friend Dave Holman at the time. This is going back to I say two thousand. He was he was getting into Dance Dance Revolution. Like he had the um mat, the home mat, and he was like trying to get good at it. Like you have those people who are, like, are nasty at Dance Dance Revolution. So we, we he was like, come on, we got to go and get to the real Dance Dance Revolution. You know, like to play the instead of just playing the the home mat, which was like shitty and like you know made of like uh, nylon or whatever. <laughs> uh, <those laughs> you want to go in the hard mat, the real my thing. System might have had one, and we used to use it once. And I, what, I, what, what was system was it for? What, I want to say PlayStation 1. Maybe. PlayStation 1, I would say. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it was PlayStation 1, in fact. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so I remember. And just going in there, and there'd be two kids battling it out in Dance Dance Revolution. Like, big crowd, you know, with, like, the the winning kid with his girl on his arm. You know, like, the hot – girl. I remember he was a hot girlfriend, like, waiting at the side. She was, like, Asian, really hot. And uh, I was going to say it had to be Asian. It's, yeah, they were all – no, yeah. they were all Asian. <laughs> Everybody was – there was two Asian kids and, like, a huge crowd of people. And – um. You know, the kids. So- one of the kids just in a white tee, completely soaked through. You could see his nipples, like completely soaked through in sweat. You know, because they play like very a appealing, battle. Very appealing. But that was that was a cool, great spot. So, Billy, uh, Steve goes to this place, Fun Spot Arcade, and he, um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll finish it up. And then, uh, it's Fun Spot Arcade. And long story short, he beats the guy Billy Mitchell's record. And Billy Mitchell shows up and he doesn't even say hello to him. Like, you're grown men. And the guy Steve's playing. Yeah, it was like in Orlando. It was like in a mall type. It was like a smaller Was that area. Was that fun spot or was that another spot? That was another spot. He like walks around. He, yeah, he walks in with his girlfriend and then the guy um, But the Steve, way he was walking was, <laughs> was yeah, hilarious. Walking in slowly. <laughs> like looking brooding. Around. Like, yeah, brooding in slowly as if he were, like, you know, was the king of the hill. It was and hilarious. The, the guy Steve turns around and he's like, oh, what's up? Hey, Billy. And then Billy doesn't even say anything. He didn't say hello to him. I'm like, he's serious. He's childish. Grown men, so it was children. also like made for great documentary. Oh, footage. it did. It because because the human element of it, the rivalry. It was literally Rocky because they gave him a second opportunity because they wouldn't give him his his title well, at his house. So he went to these places to do it in the, person. The caddy <laughs> shit he did too. They had like a meeting. Well, yeah, at his restaurant. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, the yeah. guy weave comes with his like other friend. Yeah. Like, yeah Blacklist. Yeah. And, and then he, uh, Billy Mitchell's little minion calls him on the phone. He's like, Steve's oh, here. Was the this worst. little minion, he's like, oh, he's going to do the kill screen. And he's trying to like throw, it, screw him up because he's telling so, everybody. So they, the like, other guy you know, just goes, sits nervous. down, they get another table just to like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we know you didn't invite us. Exactly, like, yeah. <laughs> they go to his restaurant. It's so funny. And yeah, what but, did they do with the restaurant? I think they played. No, they just had like a meeting of the they, players. Yeah, meeting it's of like the players. Community, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but long story short, it's 100 percent recommend. Oh yeah, it was King I, of uh, Con. Great. It's Rocky for video games. It really is. Like at one point, the guy because when they don't, they didn't give Steve his record the first time around. He ends up in the end beating it in person, getting the record. He's and the best of all. Of course, time and, you know, he was the underdog. 2015, either of them have the record. And yeah, it, he uh, he's got it, and um. But at one point, he even cries. He, he like, That's how emotional this was because it's true. It's like, you know, he's just you work you so hard at it, and they you beat it legitimately, and they don't give it to you. Yeah. And he, he shed a tear, and it was like, all wow. The reviews look at all the are fantastic. It's, all four yeah, and a half it's, got, it's like that, one of the highest rated review or documentaries on um, uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. And I, so I was like, I got to see it. And I, I'm watching it, I'm watching it, I'm watching it. And by the freaking halfway through of it, I'm like, wow, this is fucking great. It's like, you know, it's like real turmoil here between these guys. Over, But the beauty of it is like such nonsense. But you you just see how much emotion is in these guys and like how passionate they are about their little niche, which is just retro gaming, you know, right? Gaming about this stuff. So it was definitely a recommendation. Uh, so we talked about that for a while. <laughs> okay. So we'll go to real world news now. Uh, this is a big hot rumor that was updated a day ago. It looks like Han Solo and Boba Fett 
are going to be in the second Star Wars anthology film. This is the second one that's going to come out. And um, this is after two, Rogue Squadron. After Rogue on. Squadron and after Episode Eight. So this has come out in 2018. Uh, yeah. 30 years from now. Yes, yeah, this is coming out, and they, but they're already setting it up because. Oh, you think Yoda's going to be probably the third standalone? I mean, they've mentioned, or maybe it. Yoda Jedi centric. Do you really want a full Yoda movie though? I don't think it's going to be a Yoda Jedi centric. It's going to be a okay. Jedi. Okay, maybe even earlier than. Episode one, maybe like Yoda on his way up to the council type well, of thing. Yoda's you very that. mysterious characters. You never see you other Yodas. Y- well, no, Yaddle was on the council, a female Yoda, and that was the only one. But still, his homeworld, spe- is... homeworld, and species have never been devolved. Dagobah, he just went there. Even to get in the Yoda dodge. books that they had, yeah, exactly. He, Dagobah, he just went to. Dagobah, dodge. If you're a fugitive. Where are you gonna go? You're not going. You're, no, you're not unless going. you're Whitey Bulger, go to that light on everyone's nose, right? But like Osama bin Laden's not going anywhere nice. He's no, like, he's, he's, he's hiding he's out. He's hiding out. So in I would a, compare a pack of San Diego. Bikes. Yeah, pretty Some much. Place you, you still want to go? No, you know, nowhere. No reason to be around. There. It's nothing for you to do. Is he a family in Diego Bot. Yeah, Pakistan, you ain't going. <laughs> he, uh, you know, obviously just like lived in isolation. And uh, but again, you know, do I, like that was a rumor in the beginning. But do you want to see a full movie about Yoda? Maybe not. Like you said, Yo- uh, Jedi centric. But in what pers- like like the way I said it, like would it be Yoda's maybe? Coming up as a Jedi, coming up into the Council. I think you just want to know about his backstory. Yeah, it's, but you know what? Then it's, it's, it's shrouded. But the, maybe the, the shroud um might, you know, you, you you might get it might ruin it. It might ruin the character. That's why I feel like a Boba Fett movie might. But people, I, I would like to see a young Yoda. You know, Yoda traveling universe, learning. Would Would course. he look like the puppet that they had in Episode One? Well, episode one—the original pup in episode one before they did the DV, the uh, Blu-ray edit and put it made. I'm going more in the Frank eyes. You got well, original. He's Frank. old looking in that. He's dying. He's yeah. Rrr. But no, Yoda soon when I rest. Massively influential character. Oh yeah, I mean, but I would want to pursue like a bounty hunter movie. I think would be well. I used you mentioned the Fat with the Han Solo. Well, he, this is how this is apparently you got the Zuckus eighty eights and all these characters. Yeah, so and, this is apparently what's going on for so two thousand sixteen. Two thousand fifteen is obviously going to be Force Awakens. Seven sixteen is going to be Rogue Squadron or no Rogue One, excuse me, which is going to be about how the original Death Star plans were stolen for the first one, which is going to be like like a a war movie. You know, Star Wars are going to do like a war movie in space. So they're going to do that. That should be fun. It's going to be space battles, yeah. some espionage. Exactly. Know. 2017. Well, what characters would they essentially be using? I don't know who, what they're going to make the main character type of thing. I it's mean, going to be some awkward names. Probably. They'll probably throw in some, you know, random names. I don't know who, I don't know. It probably won't be, I tell you, but probably be the first movie, Star Wars movie you don't see a lightsaber in. You know, unless they need, oh, we gotta put a lightsaber, and I hope they don't do that because they don't they need could it. They do There's like no a ten-minute Jedi cameo. Oh. Maybe if a Jedi pops Maybe in, in the beginning, some Jedi's yeah. are like I wouldn't. T- you can't like you know you don't want a Jedi on the front lines doing it. Maybe they'll throw in um, what's his name from uh, Star Wars Rebels, uh, K- uh, Kanan. I haven't watched much of the if he's still alive at that point. Show, oh, it's great. Star, um, if you're a Star Wars fan and you know you could take you know it, it's it's good. It's it's not. Kitty, it's 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 legit. It's a good show. You know, you watch like it. It's of, better than Clone Wars in my but opinion. The, the Rogue Squad. I would like if they Never also delved the into movie. the essentially the Imperial factions. Oh yeah, of the course. Tie fighters in the ladder, fascinating, and they have their own little universe oh. themselves. Oh yeah, which has never been showed in in within the films itself. It, they only shown them in a linear kind of light. Being True. This, Evil, yeah. massive force. So, do you think that maybe they'll show them clearly, as like a militaristic way, the way that they're doing things, kind of like in that Japanese? Um, but this is a nurse human. That you can humanize them as well, right? Well, kind of that Japanese thing kind of did that a little the bit. Anime they made is, that anime, is, yeah. That like there's like a like three minute it's anime called Tie Fighter. Well, I the three minute one I sent you initially. It, right. They well, they made, made they remade a new it. one. It's they finished it. minutes. Yeah, so. the full one is about fifteen oh, it's minutes. Fantastic. Kind of like an episode of anime Star Wars, but it's strictly Imperial pilots. Yeah, yeah. like you know, and just whooping it. Yeah, it's it's basically done on the Imperial uh, side but of it. You gotta realize they're not clones anymore. So there's right. a human element. Like they're they have off clones. time where they're, they're going to a <laughs> yeah, cantina. Exactly. They're going there's in. officers drinking and right. In they're the recruits. I mean, look at the officers themselves. Are these guys retire? It's it's an employment. You know, they're the they're not clones. And the officers are, were never clones, and the stormtroopers and are not clones. So they're now they're recruits. So there's point. a personal you element. That. So they're exactly there's a human personal. So they, element. they have an off time, and they, yeah. they have their own agenda. Where they're thinking the rebellion is these. Yeah, exactly. Like, look at terrorists. It's like, like you know, you look at them as, as trying to destroy order. Right. They they're understand. you know they're soldiers, troopers, and uh, you know it, they think their cause is good. So um, 
you know, look at it like that. And um, it'll be really interesting to see it that way as opposed to, you know, just seeing it on the side of, you know, the good guys and then the, you know, stormtroopers being yeah, the bad guys that you just shoot up. And and, and if you look ba- – ha- harken back to episode four um, – you know, you would you would look at them as just guys, right? They small talk. You know, some of the other guys have been talking about. You know, they they small talk and they they kind of just seem like not clones. You know, they just seem like guys. They seem like recruited yeah, the soldiers. Imperial was just more intriguing to me. It's not that I wrote against the the rebellion, but, no, but if there was a reality behind it, I feel like I'd be more factioned with the sure Empire. Sure, you would. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sean be an Imperial soldier. Yeah, destroy them all. You know? <laughs> no, like Tarkin and them, they're very yeah, influential. Yeah. Oh, they, of course. They got agendas. You know, the rebellion just seemed like the these. princess put all sections on a list. They seemed a little too lucky for my liking. You understand? Oh, too easy. Yeah, that's why the that bounty hunters role is interesting too. So, they so play factions. So, Rogue One should be a good introduction into a Star Wars movie live action that deviates from the episodes, the original, the, the Skywalker story, essentially. So that should be, um, that should be fun. That should be interesting, definitely. So now you got Rogue One in next year, 2016. You've got uh, Episode Eight in 2017, and then 2000. 18, you'll have this movie, this second anthology, which looks like is going to include Han Solo and Boba Fett. So all the rumors are kind of blending together now, and we're kind of seeing, well, because you know, people said, well, there's going to be a Boba Fett standalone. Oh, there's going to be a Han Solo standalone. And now it's saying they're both in it. So maybe they're just having a mishmash where you, you're fitting Han Solo in there, and, it, and it's a so, lot of, like you, you said, at these movies, movies, and there's say, between five to eight plans. Marvel has phases upon phases. Phase oh, yeah. two, phase three. Yeah, they're going all the way and up. They're going for there's almost 20 years. There's oh, something yeah. like 15 years of these things. Yeah, well, they go up all the way. Uh, and so they're getting a little adventurous at some of these titles, too. Some of them I'm very looking forward to. Some like uh, What kind of gave them the audacity to do this massive project was... Guardians of the Galaxy was a relatively obscure franchise, right? It you know, so it was well. a, it was a f- it, it was, was a very no- well done. it was a known comic property, but not like did anybody think that it was gonna do you know too much, especially in like the pre-production process. You know, maybe when they got out of post and they, and they had you know the trailers coming out, maybe there was you know, well maybe this will come out all right. But yeah, it was very very well done and um, you know like pretty riveting. But but like you said, um, I mean they've got movies. Beyond movies, like I'm looking at the list here and the phases. There's a Marvel. Is there going to be a Marvel vs. Capcom movie? Is that true? Absolutely not. But no, uh, <laughs> absolutely not. I heard that. There's a rehash of the Spider Man. The Guardians Two is coming out 2017. Doctor Strange, which Doctor I'm a Strange. personal fan of. The Civil War is 2017 too. Civil War is. Uh, it's pretty easy. To oh, it's 2016 for Civil War. Yeah, yeah, it's not too far away. Right. Doctor Strange is next. Civil November. War is basically going to just be an Avengers without. It's just going to be. Well, they're Robert fighting Downey each other. Jr. Robert Downey uh, Jr. fighting Captain America. Captain America, you know, kind of thing. I don't. Doctor well, Strange would be interesting, um, yeah, but I'm more interested in is, is, is the Avengers Infinity War. Oh, that's if you that's ever read, a, isn't that a long 2018, time? 2018, but if you ever read like the comics, it, they're doing a part one and two with that. Jesus, well, they're really even in the, these even in the comics, there's a part one and two. It's yeah. but there's, there's a billion characters in it, and it's such a gigantic story that I don't know how they could possibly pull it off. It's Thanos' relative, which is to be the villain. Yeah, the next well, Avengers. that's what, what's the first movie that they're pulling him in because they've already pulled him in on the um, the he post credit scene. He was in Guardians for about yeah th- two to three minute scene. Wait, where was he, was he in Guardians? Like a holocron and he was oh, orders too. Oh, was he? Okay, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, you know, with this MCU, it's all ties together. So I kind of sometimes forget. It's like, oh yeah, they're all. Like Inhumans is another movie that I don't know how they're gonna make it. Yeah, that's 2018. What do you think that's of Captain? 2019. <laughs> oh shit! What, what do you think about Captain Marvel? I don't know which one they're going to use because the old Captain Marvel is a man. The new one's a woman. Um, yeah. I kind of lost yeah. touch with it. Right. It's yeah, they redid character. it as a, as a, as a chick. Captain so I don't know. Well, if you look at the comics now, Captain America is black. Uh, Thor is kind of a woman. So they have a lot of transitions, which I don't know if they're doing this purposely to market different s- segments of the market to you know right. sell more books. Right, right, right. Or they're just running out of ideas. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But they're supposed to do a complete rehash, actually, in Soon time, the next six weeks or so, put out number ones. Like Wolverine's dead right now, you know. Of course, yeah. how, how long is that character gonna no, die? No. Would you think they'll recast him? I, I don't. I think what's his name is only doing one more. He said. 
Yeah, it's little, uh, the checks. checks come his way. I, mean, he <laughs> I know. I would want to do one more. Oh. Yeah, but he's getting a little. He's getting on in years. How old is he? Well, look at Ian McKellen as did Magneto. He's, yeah, but he ain't. He's not. Uh, he's he's not. Years old. Yeah, but he's not Wolverine. That, that character's supposed to be a little older. Well, he's only forty six. You think he could definitely pull this off till fifty? He do another ten years of it. To be honest, he could probably pull it into his fifties. It's true. He could do another ten years. He of could the probably character. do it. You know, he keeps. He's in very good shape. He don't look. Old. If you look at Danny Jr., he's like, I'm done with this. Yeah. I'm sick of it. Why would he, he do that? He's making, coach. Yeah, bro, he's making fifty million a movie. What are you crazy? It's like throwing he, away a fucking fortune every time you, you say no. Like what other movie? Why would you do he that? He's good in some other things, but what else is he Three doing? Bastards. Exactly. What else <laughs> is he doing? That other movie that came out that that he was a some lawyer like movie. Stupid drama thing. Yeah. yeah. That uh, that what was the name of it? I forget. Uh, I saw a commercial. I'm like, oh, he's not wearing a suit. I'm yeah. not watching this. It was Shit. with um, what's his name? Uh. Forget that. Oh, the, the name of it was The Judge. I actually heard it got... Oh, no, it's got terrible reviews. <laughs> it lo- it I was saw with, it preview for yeah. something. I was going to watch it, so I was going to go see it, and I was like, yeah. But it was Ro- Robert Duvall and like Vincent D'Onofrio's in it. And, uh, but Bob even Bob. the recent Marvel stuff coming out. I will see Fantastic Four. I'm a big dog. Oh, Doom sure, I'll see the remake of that. That's I'm a huge sure. uh, I want to see if they could beat the the, the first... Oh, seven. we'll kill it. Yeah, the first, they oh, weren't that good. As a Doom fan, one of the most like, it's still watchable, bro. It's one of Stanley's biggest disappointments how Doom was portrayed in the movies. Because oh, yeah. Doom's really super character. Yeah, exactly. And and it was just uh, a fucking. They may have to be like it's a tool. Yeah, man. like a whack, oh, fucking shitty throwaway. So we'll see. They, they haven't shown much in the previous of Doom. They they shown like stills of him and like yeah, him. Do you looking. think he'll be like dark and brooding and? Well, that's the character. Well, that's see, what I'm he's saying. a dictator who has sorcery abilities and. He's but he was not powerful. even close. Wow, Fantastic Four got terrible rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It's got twenty seven percent. I would have thought it would got a little better than that. I gave it's it, a shit. Moment. I gave it two and a half stars. I wrote mediocre at best. <laughs> I guess so. It wasn't I remember good. watching it being disappointed. I, I didn't see. I guess I didn't. I didn't see Silver Surfer. Sixteen years old. Silver Surfer was a little better. <laughs> I saw it on cable for yeah. maybe forty I, minutes. I remember and I'm like, what, this it was on so TV, bad. and I couldn't even. I was just like, nah. So yeah, I'm, I'm assuming this this one will be much better, and uh, this Fantastic Four. Well, will still Ant Man does. It's not a, yeah, that's another. The preview thing. I'm, looked I'm, a little strange come, to me. I, yeah, uh, I think it'll be alright. I mean, you know, what are you expecting? You got to go in Paul expecting what you get. Paul Rudd is a superhero. I know. Well, hey, you're getting Affleck as Batman. <laughs> so He has the look for Bruce Wayne, at least. I know. You keep saying that. I, I don't know. look at him as Ben Affleck. The guy, I look at him as what's-his-name in uh, Days of Confused, and then as uh, he's O'Banion in Days of Confused. Well, he was Daredevil, which was a notoriously horrendous Oh, movie. my fuck. That was terrible. Did you watch the Daredevil on Netflix? No, I hear good things about the show. Very good. I yeah. highly recommend it. I tell you, what, what turned me off when I first heard about it was the Ben Affleck movie. I'm like, no. Nah. It was terrible. He's blind, and that's it, it's right? Funny, I know you're aware of Frank Miller massively. Oh, hell yeah. He Sin City. pretty much resurrected the Daredevil franchise. They were going to cancel is, it. Is he um, directing? No, nah, he's something to do with movie production, but... Oh. The comics I'm talking about. Oh, he, the comics, uh, okay. Yeah, he was... Well, he, no, he directs. He, did, he directed Sin City. Well, that was like his creation, you know, so he yeah, kind of... okay, so... Uh, the Dark Knight uh, Returns and all that. It's one of the most groundbreaking. Probably the best Batman... Yeah. ...graphic novels ever. Arguably, I mean, Watchmen's probably... Yeah, no, the best no, he, graphic novel I've ever read, but... He's a beast. Oh, yeah, the, oh, the Watchmen? What'd you think of that movie? The movie was okay. It was, the, didn't do the book justice. The book is... Yeah. If you're gonna get a one graphic novel to read, and there's no other tie-ins, there's all new characters, there's nothing after it, there's nothing before it. Check out the Watchmen. It's that's Brian Moore, I believe, who's okay. another like super influential uh, in the comic universe. Oh yeah, yo, oh Watchmen was directed by Zack Snyder. Okay, that makes sense. I forgot who. They'll that. redo it down the road next. Yeah, year. might yeah, as well milk it, it again. Yeah, sixty-five. They, they alter the story. Not massively, but good portions of it. Yeah, a substantial portion of... Uh, Some of the casting you know. could have been a little better, well, I he, You know, he did Man of Steel. I, I tell you, like, people are cut between... He did 300, too, but he did uh, Man of Steel. The 300 was his, like, game chain. That's where he first got attention. Yeah, I, that's his best movie, probably. Well, that's, because, what he, that's when he got on the map. He yeah. was obscure before then. Uh, because, um, you know, Man of Steel, like... I mean, people talk about it in the internet, like, kids like it, like, like kids that are fans of the MCU and shit, oh, we sick, but no, I, was, I didn't like it. Honestly, I didn't hate it. Uh, I know people hate it. No, nah, it was... Uh, uh, I, it's a I Superman look at movie generally negatively, Because they, but... they pulled, they tried to do the, dar- the Dark Knight, dark brooding, you know, th- theme and the dark brooding tone, 
but you don't see that with Superman. He's supposed to be, you know, clever and like, you know, like we, like I, like I, you know what? Superman, the original one, was on the other day, and he, he, he the first guy he like arrests, Please. he brings it to a cop. All right, now I, I know you don't like the original '78 Superman with uh, Christopher Reeve, but uh, and Gene Hackman, but I'm watching it. Gene Hack, yeah, he, 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 Gene <laughs> Hack, and he, he plays. Hey, he's great in the conversation, uh, and um. So he put, he's arrests like a jewel thief or whatever, and and then he brings him to the cop, and he's like, "Hello, officer," and he's like, "Um, uh, you ever hear that um, a confession is good for the soul?" Well, I'd listen to this man, <laughs> and like, he's like got jewels and, his, and he leaves. But like that's kind of how Superman was in the comics. So like this like dark brooding like you know angry Superman who's punching Zod's face <laughs> until it's nothing. It's just like ah, oh. and especially because the the range of people that want to see that kind of movie. Like you got little kids. I like Superman. You got old people because it's it's the oldest franchise of that. And he's like oh, I want to go see Superman. So you went to go see that movie. And you got old timers in there and young kids, and they got a, you know you feel so bad I, for them. I both. saw it opening weekend. And- you couldn't find a seat in the place. Oh, you sold sure. out. Packed. I'm not saying people and didn't want to see it. Sure, I they thought did. It, I thought it was it was an amazing, groundbreaking to change my life. No, but was it bad? Not at all. Do you think they're gonna do that tone for? Because he's directing. You have to introduce the character. That's a thing. Yeah, you're gonna make him doing stupid punchlines about jewel thieves. No, Secondly, but really, what police? This is not 1970s New York, right? He's chatting with police at the corner. Now. <laughs> police have their own issues these days. They're not gonna be chatting with Superman. They're, they're gonna get in trouble. You understand? I just don't see it. Did it need to be like that, like dark and like, you know, him being sad and angry and shit? I don't know. I just never seen Superman as that character. He wasn't that character DC in the comics. The universe is dark generally. It's yeah, but you, you read, you know, those comics. What was he, Action Comics or whatever? I mean, they weren't really like that. I mean, Detective I, Comics. Detective Comics. Well, you, Batman was Detective Comics. Was Superman Detective Comics too? It's the most valuable. Comic yeah, in no. oh, yeah, Superman yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so, it sold like a couple years ago on two, one of them mil, on eBay. Well, like yeah. a main condition was like yeah, two three like, million yeah, dollars. PSA ten, you know, perfect edition. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, there might be three of those that exist in the world. Yeah, or oh, well, that might be post World War. Okay, post World War two. Yeah, but you know, and then the kids then it's comic books like baseball cards. When my father had baseball cards. Mm. You, know, you have all these cards, but you're a kid. You're playing with it. You're eating ice cream, whatever. Right. You know, you're not. Keeping, no, you're not keeping your things God. in pristine condition. <laughs> if you are, you're, you're, you're fucking you're, you're, you're Luno. Character. But that's why they're so You want to enjoy it. Oh, your yeah. friend wants to read it. You know, you're, you're playing outside. We got mud, dirt. Yeah, mud, scum, Soda, ripping pages what? out, drawing on it. That's why it's $3 million. Of course, because they're just impossible child's... to find it. But that's the funny thing is that when people come up to me, yo, I got this thing I want to sell on eBay. Is it worth, the, it's worth money because it's old. It's like, well, no, it's missing this. It's broken. It's terrible condition. Like, people think that they got things like, and it's worth money. Gems, it's, gems. Old. it's like, well, bro, this was mass produced. Like, if you have the box. Out right? of the packaging. Yeah, it's, it's worth nothing, shit. You know, unless it was like some sort of weird variant or something, like the Boba Fett with the shooting missile that you know pokes kids' eyes out. And the I don't know if that was ever mass produced. They, it was. They recalled it. It wasn't. They sent out like some samples existed yeah, and stuff exactly. like that. People said that they had it, but they were just wrong. Well, if you worked for the company, you could get yeah. your hands. They, on they it. showed you the two different ones. There was one that had the L shape. Um, for the little like latch for the yes. little rocket to shoot off, and there was another one that didn't right. really have it, and the one that didn't really have it was the prototype. Right? And that was the first sort of mail in figure. Yeah, that was right. the first mail in figure at the start, and then they've been doing that for years. They were doing the mail in figures. Well, they kind of did that too. It was like, you know, with that as you said, the notoriously horrendous holiday uh, special. Yeah, which is right, funny. The holiday special, and also the, the um, it's never been aired again. It aired once. Empty package. It aired oh, once. Once that was it. I don't even know if it's available for purchase. No, not legally. Like I don't think you could go no. on like Amazon. No, or only rent pi- it or pirate copies only. No, that's not. That's so basically gone. people that record it on their VHS. Yeah, the only copies of it are available. There's no digital, nothing. No digital. There's the the recorded VHS copies that you can, you know are badly encoded from a VHS. Uh, and have all the commercials still in it? You know, they like all the commercials are like in '70s cheese. That, it's so funny. There was one of them about com- uh, '70s unions and like I think a Burger King commercial or whatever. Uh, it was a like Christmas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I see it at Burger King. I see it on the table. Oh, here. here we go. You just purchased these. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, big Jedi uh, Burger King. I'm, bi- I'm big into like the nostalgic '70s, '80s stuff. I'll throw a picture up on my uh, on the Retro Cave podcast page on Facebook. Um, I bought. Uh, some of the um, Burger King glass cups. They're the uh, vintage glass cups of Star Wars. I got two. I'm trying to collect all 12. <laughs> like a fucking loser. But I have most of them, actually. I just got... What would that cost you? Probably 100 bucks for the entire lot. It'll probably cost me about that at that point. It cost me like 8 to 10 bucks a piece. I'm buying them like one by one. I you have, should probably buy them in bulk. Do like four at a time. They have... They have 
auctions that have uh, the whole set for 150 but I like the chase. <laughs> I like to just buy them at a time. Collect yeah. all of that type of thing. If you buy 150 on cops, you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm I know. I'm going to buy $150. You said $8. You're like, eh, whatever. $40 glass. For, I mean, 40 year old glass cups, you know. But they're awesome. They're glass and they're really cool. They're like perfect for like, this is, this is a dirty one. But. He said it wasn't. Perfect to stockpile and hoard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> random collectibles. But uh, to be honest, like, I don't like too many, like, vintage stuff. I have Star Wars toys over here and stuff. But these just speak to the time period and just are, like, still kind of usable. You know, you could, like, if you have pizza, you could drink a soda out of this or cho- milk. So the chocolate milk looks really pizza good. in your house. You, I, you do definitely not give them those cups. You no. Like, get out of here. These are for me and me only. A lot of them I want. I have one upstairs that I use occasionally. The rest of them are just kind of just for sitting around. But if you did want to use them, they're they're good to use, you know. Like like I said, you pour soda in there. Tro- they're, yeah, they're if you had, someone using them, you would ask them, them to leave. Yeah, like, no <laughs> one's using. No one's just using these. They're for me and me only. I like I said, I only use one of them, uh, and it's because it's the most common one. It was uh, I could reget it if it you know if, if I mess it up. So they're really cool, and I'll post a picture of them, and hopefully I'll, I'll get all twelve. And uh, so back to Man of Steel for one second. Um, Zack Snyder's doing Batman v Superman Dawn Justice. Do you think like what do you what do you do you think he's gonna do the similar? He has huge expectations. Oh, it's the tone already. Look at the. I think the tone will the work. Preview which has no actual footage in it. You bleed. Just kind of stills and yeah. exclaim the gloomy atmosphere that they're in. I do personally think that that tone will work better in that movie than it did in Man of Steel. So I'm 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 assuming this movie will be better. There's much more height. Well. It's gonna be interesting because Wonder Woman's gonna be in the movie. And then right, I got some yeah, yeah, I heard of like beautiful Israeli actress to play. Yes, I don't know her name offhand. Yeah, yeah. So that should be interesting how they tie her in. Sure. And that's also another interesting casting. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson is gonna be Shazam's villain. Oh yeah, I heard that. Oh god. Uh, you so that, get come, coming fresh off San Andreas. I mean, he, he's super marketable. Yeah, I mean uh, he's he's a bona fide actor now, you know, as opposed to uh, a um, you know, as opposed to a WWE champion wrestler. But eh, whatever, like you say, he's marketable. He's got charisma. You know, nobody hates the Rock. You don't ever be, hear people saying, "Oh, I hate the Rock." You know, nobody really says that. So he's he's good at what he does. And uh, um, one more thing, uh, what do you think about um, the Vacation reboot or the uh, their um, the ne- the sequel, I guess, to the Vacation movies? It's gonna. It's having Ed Helms, um, uh, Christina Applegate. I think uh, Black Adam was the uh, the rock villain. He's like a Dick Tanner type guy. He wears like a Thunderbolt. Oh, he, wait, he, wait, he's gonna be in the Superman uh, Batman no, no, v Superman. But he's gonna be within the DC lore. The Rock's gonna be a DC character. Oh, DC oh okay, he's got his own character. Black Adam. He's also a Dick Tanner type dude. Uh, yeah, he, he's. I would assume a lesser known property than most others. I don't really. In the D- DC. He's, in the DC world, he's known. He's known in the DC world for sure. Because I don't really, I never really heard of it. So, but but uh, you're not gonna see him on the TV, essentially, as you read comics. No, if you're a comic movies. guy and you're in the comic book store, I guess you'd you'd recognize him, or if you read the not books, I haven't heard of it. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, we'll see. You've heard much of Shazam either. So. <laughs> no, I've heard of Shazam. I've heard of Shazam, and and I'm not thinking of Sham Wow or <laughs> anything. Sham Wow? Did he like get arrested for like? Uh, some weird shit. He was trying to hook up a kiss with a hooker. I thought he like bit a prostitute. No, what happened was he tried to. Um, he was getting a hooker and he was trying to kiss her. She's like, no mouth kissing, whatever. And he's like sticking his tongue in her mouth, so she bites his tongue and won't let go. <laughs> and, and he starts punching her in the face, and they both go to jail. Like, and he was a bloody mess afterwards. He got beat up and hit a prostitute. Well, yeah, well, he got his tongue, like, bit, and he was covered in blood. His face was all blood. You don't sell him selling nothing anymore. <laughs> Vince Proctor or whatever his name is. Fucking Israeli salesman he was. But uh, that was a funny yeah, one. His that career pic- is over for yeah, that picture, fighting a prostitute. That picture of him that, with the blood it. all over his face. That will do it. That's a funny one. We'll freaking <laughs> That'll do it to your career, yeah. But... Uh, well, look at Marv Aller, famous sportscaster. Oh, yeah. He, he bit some girl's ass and... Uh, yeah, you don't see him no more. At least it wasn't a sex worker. What, like, did, what did he sportscast again? Uh, NBA is his big... His main... Like, yeah. yeah. His main uh, thing. Yeah, what so he's known for. But he's you know, a famous caster. Yeah. And he, uh, he had his escape the limelight for a while. Keep a low profile. Yeah, I don't blame him after something like that. So, 
But uh, all right, well, well, one last thing. What do you think of this new vacation? Do you think it'll be all right? It's got Ed Helms. It's got Chevy Chase. It's got Beverly D'Angelo. They got, I guess, grandkids now. It's 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 not a it's Beverly not a, D'Angelo aged a lot better than Chevy Chase did. Yeah, he's a mess, fat and bald. I mean, how I mean, she's old, old but you know, she's hey, not. She, she's not morbid. She's she was attract- not, she, she was, was very little... attractive back in the day. But... Oh yeah, she was hot back in the day. But uh, she wasn't too bad at looking in Entourage. You know, she was like a no, exactly. Like, well, you look at Chevy Chase. He looks like shit. He, he... Yeah. No, well, look at Bill Murray. Oh, he's seventy one. These 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 old uh, comedians. They don't they don't age well. You know who looks great for their age? Is William Shatner. He's eighty. Yeah, he's over eighty. He's like eighty. Yeah, but something. he also had plastic surgery. City. Like, yeah, and that's pumped not, in his, his. And that's he's, not his real hair. He's probably like two thirds plastic. Yeah, know? I mean, but it it worked well for him but because. For eight years he's old. 84. <laughs> 84. He, March he's 22nd, still in Priceline commercials to this day. Jesus, he looks fantastic. 10, 84? Fantastic. 15 years younger. He could pull, he pull somebody off in his late 60s. He, I he saw an 84 year old guy at the post office yesterday. He looked, he looked like, like he was going to die. <laughs> he looked like that. Online. Dead. Yeah. But look, he plays Kelly Kogel's, not her grandfather, he plays her father in those Priceline commercials. And she's what, like 28, 29? She's 30 at this point. Nah, time. She might, she's, she's like. Not much. Older than she's me. generally likable. I have no yeah, no, she's, she's good. I, I I like her. She's and she's a cutie. Uh, yeah, she's twenty nine. So uh, and she he's playing her father. So, but uh, so wait, so yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. So we'll see about this vacation movie. Any you got anything else? Uh, it's something I want to go to the movie theater to see it. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch the it. The original is a classic. Uh, Wally World. That's and my all favorite that one. Shit. Wally World. Uh, yeah. The like Christina like Brinkley with the hot with the, the yeah the car. That's iconic scene. She had a child with Billy Joel. I know. Well, it's, you you marry Billy Joel, you pay the price. <laughs> yeah, the uh, fucking piano man over there. Interesting side note: Billy Joel threw up in my dad's cousin's basement in high school. They grew up in Long Island, New York, so he was always a drinker because he's had numerous DUIs fucking and stuff. booze count, sure. But he's probably one of the more famous, uh, you know, stat. He's what Long Island, like Bruce Springsteen is to Jersey. He's what that's a Long Island. You know, yeah. he's a very iconic Long Island type figure. And, you know. He, He's just doing 20 shows now at the Garden. Right. I'm not like, you know, I'm not like, oh, I'm a Billy Joel no, fan, but no, I, don't, I don't dislike him either. People have been asking me to go, and I'm like, yeah, he's doing so many of them. He kept saying, I'm going to I'm gonna play shows until they don't want me to play them no more. I'll play till I can't I remember, like, out. he did a big show at Shea Stadium for it. They tore it down. I don't oh. know if he sold out. It was, like, a massive production. It was Queens, Long Island. It's yeah, also, like, into the whole Mets territory. Exactly, naturally. Like he goes to the Bronx and like twelve people. There. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, we go Eminem, Jay Z. Like you, you play yeah. for your market. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, all right, that uh, wraps it up for today. Uh, I think we uh, covered everything. Um, uh, I think well, we'll have a good episode. We're gonna be looking forward to the. Uh, I don't know if it's the next episode we'll be doing the Jurassic Park World review, but we do. We'll be doing it soon, guys. If you liked everything you heard. Uh, you know, like us on Facebook at the Retrocade Podcast, the Facebook page. Um, where, where can they find you, Sean? They can find you on Twitter. Sean doesn't have a Twitter. I'm not on the Twitter market. You yet. can find me uh, on Twitter uh, as as Philly M. You can find me on Instagram as uh, I'll get out Philly this, Boy. Son. Yeah, and uh, you can follow us there. And also, um, like, subscribe, and rate us on iTunes. You can give us a review. That would be awesome. And uh, and that's it. We have nothing else to ask. Enjoy your uh, enjoy the upcoming weekend. And uh, have a good one, everybody. Keep watching the stars.